here's what I know. I, I really believe that in life that most of us, if not all of us, at some point in life have been under pressure. I, I think that there's probably some of you that are here today that might be under pressure. Uh, I, I don't know. Again, there are times in my life. And so today I want to talk to you about dealing with stress or coping with stress. How many of you have ever had stress in your life? How many of you had it today on your way to church with your spouse? <clears throat> My wife and I quit riding together a long time ago because it just didn't work out. We lived three minutes from here and we found out it was too long to spend together in a car. So come on, y'all going to have to help me out. Uh, we're, I'm in a good mood today. The weather is beautiful. I'm having a bonfire tonight at my house with my grandkids, and I'm loving every minute of it. He said, that's not my thing. That's all right. That's my thing. That's my thing. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to today, but I believe that this word is going to encourage you. In fact, I think this whole series is going to encourage you. I think it's going to lift you up and that's what I want you to do. I want you to enjoy the journey. I want you to enjoy the journey. So today I'm going to talk to you about coping with stress. Next week, if you know somebody or you know, uh, or you have yourself, I'm going to talk to you about how you deal with depression. Here's what I know. We live in a world today that a lot of people are dealing with depression. If you know somebody, tell them you want to come out and hear how we're going to deal with depression the biblical way. We're going to talk about how do you rebound from failure. I don't know about you, but I've had failure in my life, and I need to know how to rebound from that. And then I'm going to close the series out in November talking about how we can live life above average. I want to live an above average life. You say, I'm good to live average. Not me. I want to live above average. He said that I came to give you life and that more abundantly. I want it. I want to live that abundant life. And so how, how do we? I'm going to talk to us about how we navigate through this thing called life and the pressure that life brings. Because again, life brings all kinds of pressure. And here's what I found. It really doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your social status. It doesn't matter your gender. None of that matters. All of us face pressure in life. Uh, I talk to kids that, that they face all kinds of pressures. I talk to adults. I talk to people that's got a lot of money. I talk to people that don't have much money. And guess what? I have found that we all have one thing in common, and that is we have stress. We have stress in our life, every one of us. And so I, I want to talk to us today about how we cope with that. But let's talk about Jesus just for a moment. I mean, can you imagine the constant pressure that Jesus was under? I mean, when you think about it, because some people wanted him, but some people didn't want him. Some people couldn't understand him. And so there's this constant pressure that Jesus is, is, is under, I mean, constantly. But if you think about it, you never saw him sweat. You never saw Jesus sweat. You never, I mean, when they're, they're, uh, the storm is arising, they go wake him up. He didn't freak out. He didn't stress. He, didn't, he just said, peace, be still. I mean, it's really that simple. When you think about it, he really didn't, he, you never saw him sweat. You never saw him cave into pressure. And you say, yeah, but pastor, I mean, he, he's doing that because he is the son of the living God. Well, let me ask you something this morning. Who are you? He's the son of the living God, but who are you? Are you aren't you sons and daughters of the, the living God? Come on, folks. aren't we sons and daughters of the living God? And if he was able to do it because he was God's son, then we ought to be able to do it too. Because we are sons and daughters of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And again, I don't think it's only because he was the son of God that he was able to do it. But I think his, he based his life on some sound principles. I think he based his life on stress management. I, I think you say, Jesus did it? Yeah, I, th I think he really did. And I believe everyone in here, now again, some of y'all are being quiet, but I believe every one of us in here would say, you know what? I'd like to live life with a little less, less stress. I, I'd like to have, a, I don't think anybody in here would say, not me, I love a stressful life. I love for my life to be in turmoil. I, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't stand peace. No, I think all of us sitting in here today would say, I want more peace in my life. I told them in the first service, here's what I have discovered. And, and, and even the older I get, I just want peace. 
I don't want to fight with anybody. I saw a meme and it said, and I love what it said. It said, you know, I, I really just want peace. If you say one plus one is three, hey, you're right, enjoy. Why? Because I don't want to argue. I just want peace in my life. I, I don't want to argue. I want to, I want to hang out with my grandbabies. I, I want to hang out with my wife. I want to just sit on my porch. I want to, and, and you say, man, you're crazy. No, that's, that's what, I just want peace in my life. And so this morning, I want to help you. Because even though maybe some of you are saying, I really don't want peace, I really think you do. And so I want to help you, and I want to give you seven principles. This is not principles that I just come up with myself, but this is principles out of the Word of God that if you will apply it to your life, I think it will help you. Now, here's the kicker on it. You have to apply it. Because if you just listen to me for the next 30 minutes and you don't apply it, then it's not going to do any good. It's like sunscreen. It can stay in the bottle all you want. And if it's setting beside you, you're going to burn. But if you will apply the sunscreen, it will work. You know what? If you will apply this word that God has given me to give you, then it will work. We, we had the first service, we had this front was full of people that were dealing with stress. And we prayed over them. And you know what I believe? I believe that this afternoon is going to be a lot better than their last week has been. <laughs> I believe that if you will allow it, I believe you're going to leave here today with a smile on your face. And you're going to say, man, I'm enjoying the journey. We're, we're having fun. And so I want, to, I want to give you some principles. Grab your Bibles, go to the book of John. And I'm going to be, I will be skipping around in Scripture, so uh, it will be up on your sc the screens as well. But, but I want to read the first part in the book of John, of, of John chapter 8, 10, and 14. There's a setting there. John 8 and 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. And then we look down at verse 9 in chapter 10. He made a statement. He said, I am the gate. And then if you look at chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so I really believe the first principle in handling stress in your life is identification. I think it's identification. You need to know who you are. You, you need to know who you are. You, you need to have an understanding who you are. Because here's what I found out in life. If you don't know who you are, somebody else will tell you who you are. Oh, no, they will. They, they will tell you who they think you are. They, they will say, well, I think, I think you're this. And if you don't know who you are, then, then you're not even going to realize it, but you're going to let other people pressure you into believing something that you really aren't. Because people will do it. They, they will come to you and they will say, well, I, I really think, I think you'd be good at this. In reality, you hate to do that. There are things people would look at me and say, I think you'd be good at this. I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to do that. So, so you have to really grab a hold. And, and stress in life results from hiding behind a mask and trying to be somebody you're not. Sure. You know what people want today? They want authenticity. Yeah. They want to know you're real. You say, yeah, but pastor, my life jacked. I'd rather know you're real than to be acting like something you're not. I, I would, because it's going to bring stress into your life. And so here's the feeling. Insecurity always produces pressure in our lives. Insecurity always produces pressure. Anytime you're insecure about who you are. And so what happens, you set up unrealistic standards. We work, we stress, we lay awake at night. I've done it. I've done it many times. Laid awake at night and we're still un unable to meet those unrealistic standards in our life. Why? Because somebody else has set them up for us and we think we ought to be something that we really are not. I mean, think about it. Tension and pressure naturally occur as a result. I mean, there's tension, there, there's tension, there's pressure, there's, uh, man, I think you're this, I think you ought to do this, I think, and you're constantly worried about it, you're laying awake at night because you don't want to fail anybody. The first way to balance stress is to get an internal balance of who you are. Who, who are you? I know you're thinking, man, this ain't deep. No, but it will help you. Who, who are you? You have to understand because here's the thing, you will know who you are by if you know whose you are. 
You say, I'm a child of the king. Exactly. So you need to live like it. You need to live like you are a child of the king. Think this way. Hey, you know what? I'm a child of God. Well, everything's not going to. It doesn't matter. I'm still a king's kid. I was put on this earth for a purpose. Do you know that? Do you realize that God created? He didn't mess up. He didn't say, oh, man, I messed up. And, and I put Israel. He was supposed to be living uh, back on Walton's Mountain. Israel wouldn't have made a good kid on Walton's Mountain. He didn't mess up and say, oh, you should have been. Uh, I've heard people say, well, I should have been born 100 years ago. You know why you weren't born 100 years ago? Because God said, I put you in this earth for this day. I put you in this earth for a reason, and there is something else. So you need to realize, hey, you're not an accident. You're not here just because you just showed up. But God said, hey, I spoke you into existence, and you're here because I have a destiny for your life. So you have to understand, you have to have an identification. And once you realize, then guess what? You're able to handle stress because to handle stress, you've got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. John 5, 30. So by myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. The second principle to handling stress is dedication. It's dedication. Here's a crazy thing. Here's what I found out in life. You can't please everybody. You, you, has anybody ever found that? You can't please everybody. You can't do it. Because here's the thing. Half of you right now are saying, it's freezing in this place. And the other half saying, it's burning up. I wish they'd turn the air on. Right? You go out to eat, and you, eat, you, 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 you both order steak. And your wife says, I want mine well done. And the waiter looks at you and says, how would you like yours done? You say, well, I would like mine like I win arguments with my wife. And he would say, rare it is. <laughs> I'm just keeping you on your toes. You can't play because why? Everybody wants something different. Why is it in life? And, and again, I'm talking now. Some of you are going, I ain't talking. No, I'm talking to all of you because why? We're human. We're, we're, we're all the same in this area. Why is it in life that we try and please people? Hear me this morning. God did not please everybody. Why do we try to do something God can't even do? So we go around life and we say, well, I want to please you. I want to please you. Here's what I always say as far as pastoring a church. I usually have 20% of the people mad at me most of the time. The, the key to that is keep that revolving. <laughs> that way it's not the same 20%. Why? Because you're not going to please everybody. And the quicker we understand that, the quicker we learn that you can't do it, then guess what? We will not live under stress. Because here's the thing. When you don't know who you're trying to please, you say, I, I don't know. I'm trying to please this one. And this one says, well, do this. And this one says, do that. What happens is when you don't know who you're trying to please, you cave into three things. One of them is criticism. You cave into criticism. You know why? Because you're concerned about what other people Think about you. Let, let me, I want to free, I want to free 90% of you up. Quit worrying about people's opinion about you on Facebook. I'm telling you, you might not realize it, but if you would apply that, we could go home right now and your life would be a lot better off. <laughs> because we, if we're not careful, criticism comes. Competition's another thing. Because we worry about if somebody's getting ahead. I mean, we're constantly, man, I, and so we get stirred. Well, what about, what if they get ahead? What if it, you know what I'm doing? I'm sitting on my back porch drinking a cup of coffee saying, I don't care. Come on, I, I don't care. Because it's not he that runs the fastest, but it's he that endures the end. And so while you're all stressed out, you might cross the finish line, but I'm going to be sipping a cup of coffee walking across the hay. You know, it's kind of like people that go on Route 13. I love this. And they fly by you like you're sitting still. I mean, they get ticked off. Just because I drive 37 in a 55, what's the big deal? 
<laughs> you got two other lanes, you can get around me. But what's so cool about it, they blow by, blow by you, and, and they're ticked off, you can tell, by, by how they wave at you. And, and you get up to the next set of lights when they're sitting there at a red light. And just as you get up to that red light, it turns green and you go, by. <laughs> Jesus loves you. <laughs> right? Because, because what happens, we get in this competition and not only that, we have conflict. Because what happens so many times, we feel threatened when somebody else disagrees with us. It's okay if people disagree with you. I might say something, I might, I might, there might be something I like, and you might say, well, I disagree. It doesn't matter. Come on, I'm trying to set some of you free. Matthew 6.33 says, but seek first people's opinion on Facebook. Some of y'all need to quit asking about Facebook and go to the doctor. And say, Amen. Yeah. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. And so here's the thing. If you will dedicate your life to focusing on God, it will simplify your life. If you'll quit focusing on what everybody else is thinking, what everybody else is saying, worrying about what they're saying, and say, you know what, I'm going to focus my life on God. I'm going to focus on Him because the Word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So I really don't worry about what other people think. I want to worry about what He thinks. Let me help you today. Don't worry about what your pastor thinks of you. I love you. I can't get you to heaven. He's going to worry about what He thinks. Are we all right? You might not be running, but I'm telling you, this is helping you if you will apply it to your life. John 8, 14, Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. The third principle for you to be able to handle stress, and I can't repeat this enough, is organization. Look at your neighbor and say, organization. Jesus said, I know where I came from, and not only that, I know where I'm going. Hear me today. Plan your life. Set priorities in your life, or guess what? You're going to be pressured by other people to do what they think is important. Here, here's something. I've used this for years, and it's worth it. If you're not taking notes, you ought to write this down. People love to put their monkey on your back. Here's the thing, just because they're passionate about it doesn't mean you're passionate about it. And so all of a sudden we start doing this because I had an instance, this has been years ago, an individual come up to me and was flat mad. I mean ticked off mad. We ought to be doing this. Why ain't we doing this? We ought and I, I just looked at them and I said, whoa, 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 don't put your monkey on my back. God called you to it. You know what? They got happy about it and realized it and they ended up doing it and God blew it up. Why? Because God was calling them to do it. Quit letting people put their monkey on your back. Because here's the thing, you will live by priorities or you will live by pressures. You're going to live by priorities or you're going to live by pressures. Either you decide what's important in your life or other people's going to decide for you. <laughs> Are we okay? You know what's important in my life this evening? Building a fire, sitting around it with my grandkids, roasting hot dogs, and eating s'mores. You say, well, man, it ought to be, you ought to be fasting this evening. Don't put your monkey on my back. <laughs> S'mores has 800 calories. Who cares? <laughs> because here's the thing. I'm either going to make priorities in my life or I'm going to live by pressures. And so I've got to decide what's important in my life. Now, let me rush to say Jesus Christ needs to be the main importance in your life, okay? I, I'm not saying put anything above him, but I'm saying there's things in our life you've got to decide. Preparation, and please hear me today, preparation will cause you to be at ease, and it prevents pressure. 
but procrastination produces it. Let me walk you through my week real quick. Here's what happens on my week. On a Monday morning, I get here about 6 in the morning. First thing I do is I go through connection cards and I pray over them. No staff's here yet. I work on my reports. And then I start doing message prep. On Tuesdays, I come in. I pray over connection cards. I come in before any of the staff get here. I do sermon prep. I do staff meeting. On Wednesday, I'm usually here from Wednesday morning all the way through Wednesday night. That's why I'm tired when I leave. It's usually a 14-hour day for me. And I'm doing prep. But here's the thing. By Wednesday evening, by actually by Tuesday, I'm ready for Wednesday. And by Wednesday, Sunday's done. And you say, why are you telling us this? Because that brings, that brings peace in my life. Because I'm not running around on a Saturday evening telling my wife, oh, I've got to stay up late tonight. I'm trying to put something together for them on Sunday morning. Well, what if God wants to change it? Then God can change it. But I can't procrastinate. What if something happens on a Friday and one of you end up in an emergency room and I need to be there with you? I know this is simple, but I'm telling you, if you will do things in your life, it will bring peace. Some of you live a chaotic life because you procrastinate. <laughs> God should not have made me say that. But I'm telling you, it's the truth. It, it is the truth. Organization and preparation reduce stress. I'm telling you, go home and get organized. I was telling him in the first service, that's like my truck, and, and we hunt, we fish, we do all that kinds. Of, but when you get in my truck, I promise you that it's, it's relatively clean. You say, why are you saying that? Because here's the thing. I, can't, I, don't, want to be a, I don't want to be involved in anything that has chaos. It brings peace to your life. Peace. Some of you can get peace by cleaning your car out. I'm just telling you, if you're not careful, organization and preparation will reduce stress, I promise you. Having clear goals greatly simplifies life. Because Jesus said, hey, I know where I came from. I know where I come from and I know where I'm going. And so if you will say, hey, I'm going to have some clear goals. Again, my, my week is already laid out for me. Now that can change, but my week's already laid out. I know why I have clear goals of what I want to accomplish. And so you're going to be ready. I've already started putting together next Sunday. So you're going to be, you, I'm, I'm going to already know my week. And what does that do? For me, it gives less stress because I already know my goals. I know what I am doing. Mark 3.13. Are we doing okay? Yeah. Jesus went up on the mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came with him. The fourth principle to handle stress, and this is one I'm not good at, but I try to be, is delegation. You got to delegate. Jesus chose 12, and he delegated his authority. And so one of the reasons that so many times we get stressed and we get tired is because we think everything depends on us. We think it depends on us. If, it, if it's going to get done, we've got to do it. Hear me today. Don't try to do it all by yourself. Here's two reasons we don't delegate. One of them is perfectionism. We say, hey, if I want a job done right, I'll do it myself. Have you ever made that statement? I've made that statement. My wife tried to cook one night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying if you're still with me. Think about it. Jesus could have done a far better job himself, but instead he allowed his disciples to do the work and he let them make mistakes on the job. He let them learn as they went. Another reason we don't delegate is insecurity. What if I turn it over to them and they would do a better job than me? I always tell the guys that's preaching on Wednesday nights for me that come in and preach, I always tell them, blow the roof off the place. 
If I'm gone, when I come back, tell me that a hundred received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and we baptized so many people that our, our, our fingers were just like prunes. Yeah. It's not going to bother me. Why? Because it's about the kingdom. It's never about me anyway. And so we have to understand. We've got to say, hey, I, I'm, you can't live in insecurity. You can't live in insecurity. It's very important. So you have to delegate. Mark 1.35, he said, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went off to a solitary place where he prayed. The fifth pr principle and one of the most important principles, if you're wanting to, to remove stress from your life, is meditation. It's meditation. Prayer is a gigantic stress reliever. You want to relieve stress from your day? When you get up in the morning, pray. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Well, I wait and do it in the evening. You know what? You'd have a lot less stress if you'd pray in the morning. Because here's the thing. If Jesus made time for prayer, how much more important is it for us to make time for prayer? Pastor, I don't have time. You better make time. You better make time because that is a stressor or that is a stress reliever. And so you got to spend time in prayer and seeking the face of God. Mark 6, 31 said, Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me. And here, you know, as I was reading this and putting this together, I began thinking about this. And I don't think he yelled this to them. I'm almost thinking that Jesus looked at them and kind of whispered and said, Hey, guys, come with me. Let's go to a quiet place and get some rest. Let's, let's go. Let's go hang out. Sixth principle to handle stress is recreation. Recreation. Hear me very clearly. You got to take time off and enjoy life. Come on, take it from an old guy. You got to take off time and enjoy life. It's a principle of relaxation and recreation. You got to enjoy life. Mark 6 32, it says, So they went away by themselves in a boat. The, I have scripture that says I need to have a boat. <laughs> My wife said, you don't need one. It's Bible, baby. <laughs> they went by. You've got to take time. Here's the thing. Hear me really clearly. And again, I hope you're taking notes. Rest and recreation are not optional. It's not optional. It is not so. It is something that you have to do. You got to get rest. You got to, and there might be, and I, I counsel with some young pastors, and one individual, I always ask, and he's called and he's stressed out, and just, and, and, and I tell him, I say, hey, dude, what, what, is your, what is your stress relief? What do you do? Well, I don't have any. I said, you better find one. You got to find an outlet. For me, it's setting out in the woods, deer hunting. You say, I can't believe you'd shoot a deer. I don't want to shoot one. I just want to sit out in the woods. And they come walking by. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> don't bother me. <laughs> it's quiet out there. You say, I couldn't stand that. You know why? Because that's not your thing. Right. But you got to, you, you say, well, I like to hit a golf ball. That would, that would be a stressor for me. <laughs> now, if I could shoot them, then, then that would be cool. <laughs> So see, the, what it is for a stress relief for you might be different for me. But you got to find an outlet. Again, for me, you say, you mean you're going to have five screaming kids and, and one that's older going to sit around a fire and you're going to be, a, that's a stress relief. Yeah, that, that is for me. Man, I couldn't handle it. That's okay. I'm not saying you have to do that. See, I'm not putting my monkey on your back. I'm just saying, what is it that you do? You need to have some rest and recreation in your life. It could be a number of things. You know another thing I enjoy doing that people think I'm crazy? I enjoy mowing. You go, good, come and relieve some stress on my yard. I just enjoy it. I don't know why. I just enjoy it. So it doesn't have to necessarily be, oh, I've got to go on a beach somewhere. 
<laughs> that's nice, but that doesn't have to always be. You got to find something. You got to have the rest and recreation in your life. I was telling them a story in the first service, and, and most of you, or some of you at least, know my dear friend and was my mentor, Pastor Philip Meek. Died at 59 years old of a heart attack. Now, those of you that did not know him, uh, he was a picture of health. I mean, he, all of us campus guys, out of any of us that were there at the time, he would have been the last one we would have thought. We figured he had lived to be 100 years old. And at 59 years old on a treadmill, massive heart attack died. I, I don't know this for a fact, but I would almost say if he was here, he would agree with me. I can't tell you the days that he would call me at 9 o'clock at night. And he always called me muchacha. I don't know why. He just did. He'd call, and I can still hear his voice. Hey, muchacha, what are you doing? I'm getting ready to go to bed. What are you doing? I'm just leaving the office. And he did that all the time. And he was stressed all the time. You could not even sit down and eat with him for him receiving calls and texts from people that were either sick or disgruntled. And I firmly believe part of his problem was he had so much stress in his life. And I'm not saying if you don't relieve the stress that that's going to happen to you. But here's what I'm saying. I would dare say that he would tell you, and he enjoyed life. I'm not saying he didn't, but I would dare say that he would tell you, enjoy the journey. Get some rest, get some recreation. Laugh a little bit. That's why I was saying, I like to hear people laugh. Laugh a little bit. Don't take life so serious. Take living for God serious. But don't take life, are, are we Okay. Because we're living in a world that's just, it's full of stress and it's, it's, it's COVID this and it's vaccine this and it's this and everybody's at each other's throat and it's, a, it's like chill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, just enjoy life. Enjoy living for God. Enjoy that abundant life that he said you could have. Let stress go. Get some, and, and so we, here's the thing. Balance is the key to stress management. Yes. You got to have balance in your life. Yeah, I'm not saying, oh, quit your job and just, no. You got to have balance in your life. You know the old saying, I work hard, but I play hard. And so you got to find those stress reliefs in your life. And hopefully some of these I'm giving you today will help you and you will apply them. And then the seventh one, in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Israel, come on up. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. See, that's what I was trying to show you today. He was trying to teach you some principles. Because here's what I really believe. God doesn't want you to be stressed. He doesn't want you to live a stressed life. He said, take my yoke upon you. And he said, learn from me. For he said, I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the last principle that I want to give you today to handle stress is transformation. It's transformation. Give your stress to Jesus. Give your stress to Jesus. I want us to stand right now. Here's what I know because I've experienced it myself. Jesus can transform your life and turn it from being stressful to being satisfied. 
Jesus can do that for you. And here's what I will also tell you. You will never, ever enjoy complete peace of mind until you have a relationship with the Prince of Peace. That's where it's coming from. You got to have a relationship with him. And so I would say the greatest place, the greatest source of stress comes in our life trying to live apart from Jesus Christ. He don't want you to do that. 